To parenting now though, and starting school can be an emotional time for the parents and for the kids, mostly for the parents actually. There are new school grounds to navigate, new friends to make and more structured work to cope with. So what can we do to prepare our littlies? Joining us today on the And Mum Pedia Pro 3 Coffee Group is Jenny Hale from The Parenting Place and Kindy Advisor Harriet O'Sullivan. Good morning to you both. Hi there. Harriet, let's start with you. What should kids know when they start school? Yeah, I think getting ready and being ready for school is one of the main kind of reasons that lots of parents enrol in the first place in education and care so that's often comes as like their first question like I what are you going to do yeah. and actually it's something that's not maybe what we think it should be and maybe not the traditional academic stuff actually the things that are going to prepare your children the most for school is those children that have a really positive view of themselves as a learner and so when you look at the research and you look at when they're in school and they get to kind of about the age of about seven or eight um, actually it doesn't matter if they've learned to write their names and all their colours and their numbers and everything at three and a half or if they didn't do any of that because they were too busy having a fabulous childhood until the age of six and then they learnt to do it actually by seven everybody's pretty much at the same kind of place mm. so really it's about kind of get outside play learn those social skills um, get to be able to kind of regulate yourself and kind of know what it means to be a good person and what it means to be a good learner yeah. and what the skills are to and take. the learning yeah. will all fall into place Jenny mm. in terms of social skills mm. what can we help our children with I think if children are going to school, they really need to know how that they can ask for help. Often mm. children don't know um, what they can do if they're stuck or they don't know where the toilet is or can they have a drink. So let them know that they can always ask for help. So that helps children not be feel mm. anxious at school. And then sometimes just helping them know that saying hello to the teacher or their friends is what you do and saying goodbye is a great thing to do. Mm. And if we don't let our kids know these things, sometimes they just don't do them. Mm. So mm -hmm. I think those sort of things give children confidence to just know what to do if they're stuck or they're uncertain about something. Mm -hmm. That's very good advice and that's very mm. good life advice, not just for school obviously, mm, they should yeah. be able to greet people that they see uh, on the street, and well, not just on the street, but <laughs> in social <laughs> situations. Yeah, yeah. Within um, reason. Within reason. <laughs> Harriet, should we be giving our four-year-olds homework then in preparation for school? Um, yeah, I mean, I think actually the very best homework we can give our children these days is to get them outside and play. Um, I mean, we are facing a pretty big obesity crisis as it is, and actually when you look at some of the research and things that come out, the hor horrible thing to think is that some of our children spend less time outside than like some of the inmates in our prisons, which is mm. just Gosh. you know amazing and awful. So yes, get outside um, and you know, walking barefoot in the grass and playing in the trees. We want to get our children to be connected to the world that we live in. I mean, sustainability is a really big kind of buzzword at the moment and things, but actually we need to get our children to kind mm. of love the place that we live and therefore want to look after it for the future. But yeah, definitely just get outside. Yes, not yeah. that homework of they have to learn the numbers. Because as you no, said, they basically will all end, end up at the same yeah. level at around about seven anyway, yeah. which takes the pressure off the parents yes. a bit mm. too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jenny, what about educational games? Are they helpful? As long as they're fun. You know, sometimes we feel like we've got to sit our kids down and they've got to learn their alphabet mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Actually, children just need the context of it's fun to learn. And if they show an interest in something, then I'd, ju I'd jump on board. But making it too forced or formal often is counterproductive. And mm. If children feel anxious, they're less likely to learn. So it's got to be fun, mm. whatever we do. So yeah, bring out the I Spy and the, you know, the marbles and the knuckle bones and the, the card games, but all in the context of it's fun, it's relaxed, we're having a nice time. Yeah, mm. I Spy, that's a great one to play in long mm -hmm. card journeys. Although <laughs> yeah. it's not so good when they can't spell so well because <laughs> you, know, you get a few interesting things, Sounds but it's like. very helpful. Um, <laughs> what sort of games, toys could we be playing at home, do you think, Harriet? Um, I think kind of as as um, Jenny was saying, it's kind of really making it fun and actually the kind of toys that are the best kind are the kind of really open-ended ones. It's the sticks, like a stick is the number one toy of all time. Um, so yeah, it's the sticks and the stones and the blocks, the things that are open-ended that really make the children have to think about it rather than the toys that kind of you press a button it does everything for them yeah. because they're not then having to think. And actually sometimes having that little bit of boredom and them having to challenge themselves to solve yeah. the problems, you know, all of our greatest inventions Inventions come from tinkering around and playing around yeah. with things and making a mistake and having another go. So if we want to, you know, inspire the mm. inventors of the future, then it's yeah, exactly. have a go with the That box. is one for the dads too. So mm. if you buy them the millennium.
Millennium Falcon in, in Lego, let them do it, but then let them yeah. break it up and do other yeah. things with yes. it as well. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Exactly. Yeah. Very good advice as always. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Coffee Group is brought to you by Anmam Pedia Pro 3, the only toddler milk with no added sugars. Now, if you have any worries that you would like addressed by our parenting panel, you can message us on the Cafe Facebook page. Now, one contributor will get this cool ebook from Anmam that allows you to record your voice reading the story. And congratulations. Special bedtime story from me, just for you. That's getting really annoying. I'm going to definitely. I say this every week, don't I? Go to change this book soon, but you can put your own voice in it. Congratulations to this week's winner, Melissa Wenham, and thanks for all of the great suggestions. We really do love hearing your ideas.